Hello. Today I'm tasting a well-known um, Pinot Noir from uh, New Zealand's Central Otago. Um, this is Mount Difficulty. This is their 2020 um, Bannockburn Pinot Noir. Um, and um, yes, Mount Difficulty are relatively new wineries. In fact, the um, entire region of Central Otago is, is relatively young. Um, Mount Difficulty was, was founded in the 1990s. Their first vintage release was in the 1998. Um, and as, a, a, as an estate, as a brand, they established their name really quite quickly through some, some um, trophy wins in the Air New Zealand Wine Awards. Um, and soon expanded their range and have expanded their distribution and they're quite widely available worldwide. Um, the estate uh, initially centred on five vineyards, uh, the winery is in fact on Felton Road which is uh, a name associated with high quality Otago Pinot Noir certainly. Um, these five vineyards were all south of the uh, Kawarau River um, and it's worth noting that Mount Difficulty have a number of different ranges they make with some slightly different geographical origins. I mean, for instance, from within the Cromwell Basin, um, but not actually um, within Bannockburn itself, they, they make the Roaring Meg wines. So um, they have an, a number of different labels according to where they, they are produced. Um, the company is uh, currently owned by the Foley family, who, are a group, who have a group of um, wineries mostly producing quite high quality wines throughout New Zealand. Um, so in terms of the, the planting here, there's a, a wide variety of soil types on these five vineyards, but all low vigour. I mean, it literally ranging from loam through sand, gravel, um, and um, as I say, but all, all low vigour, um, quite friable soils, one would assume. Um, Plantings initially were with some pretty standard um, clones. When people talk about um, uh, the types of clones for Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is, is genetically not particularly stable. So the, the different sort of clone that you plant can have quite an effect on the, the quality. The, these are all sort of pretty standard plantings they have here. The older plantings are clone five, clone six, which would come from the University of Davis in California. Um, and another clone called Ten Bar Five, but the newer plantings and most of the wine, most of the grapes that go into this particular wine from, were from the older plantings. But some of the um, contribution was from uh, newer plantings, and they're on uh, French Dijon clones, sort of 113, 115, um, 667, and 777. So th th there's quite a, a careful analysis of what has been planted to try and create the sort of style of, of wine they're looking for. And then the vineyards are um, each fermented individually, so that, that although the, the clones are co-fermented, and they may have slightly differing ripening times, so you need to be quite careful as to when you pick each one there. Um, the, the, the vineyards, as I say, they try and ferment those um, se separately, or each vineyard together, but with the vineyard separated. Um, the... Um, Wines are fermented in open fermenters, but first of all, they're given about a week of cold soaking. Um, and during that cold soaking, so the fermentation is not allowed to start. It's kept te too cold for the yeast to operate. And the um, uh, cap of skins and the um, floating grapes are pushed back down into the juice to try and extract, principally at that stage, aroma and colour, um, while you haven't actually got any alcohol present. Um, the uh, grapes, I should have said, um, I think about 75% um, of them are left as whole, whole berries in the ferment. So they're, they're de-stemmed, um, they may be lightly crushed, but they're, they're not broken up. So that protects the pips from uh, strong extraction, so you're not going to take a lot of tannin out of those. You'll be taking tannin more from the skins, which will be a softer tannin. Um, a small proportion, about four to ten percent, depending on which. Obviously, all these individual ferments have slightly different proportions, but a small pro proportion, so less than ten percent, um, is left as whole bunch. So, that if the um, uh, pedicels are the um, sort of woody parts that, that hold the grapes together in the bunch are ripe enough, they can go into the ferment, and they they will. Um, they actually they, they take some air in with them, and that helps lengthen the ferment. So that's quite a, a useful um, technique to use. Um, 
So quite a lot of careful and thoughtful handling going in, into this wine. So it, as I say, it spend, spends about a week with a cold maceration, it then ferments for just over a week, probably about eight days, in open fermenters with this pushing down going on again to, to extract from it. Um, and then it's left for um, seven to nine days um, to macerate after it's fermented to dry. So that then you've got some extraction, probably taking more tannins from the pips at this stage because you've got the presence of alcohol, which will be an extractant. Um, so that'll give the, the wine more structure. Um, the wine then runs into barrel um, where it stays for a year. There's, there's no note about oak. I would assume it's going to be French oak barrel. Um, and it, there's no mention of new oak either. So. Um, I don't know what proportion would go into that, but probably not a large amount. Um, and um, the wine will do its, its malolactic conversion in, in um, the barrel, and it's then bottled with just a light filtration, no fining at all. So they, they make the point that the wine is um, vegan friendly, so there's been no animal product or dairy product used to um, remove tannins from this wine. So. Uh, there's that. So let, I, th I think that's probably covered off the wine making fairly comprehensively. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? Um, we've got a, a medium ruby red. It's quite dark in colour, but it's not particularly deep. You can see through it really easily. Um, as I swirl it, it doesn't seem particularly to be throwing you know, heavy tears, but um, it says it's 14% alcohol, so th there should be a a certain weight to it, but um, oh, it's starting to there, throw some, some tears. Um, so the aromas. Hmm, the aromas are starting to open up. I, I, I sniffed it earlier and there wasn't an awful lot there, but this is more sort of earthy and perhaps truffly with an underlying maybe red plum to prune ripeness. Um, there are chocolatey notes and a hint of coffee, but they're not dominant actually. The, um, the red fruit more than um, overmatches them, but it's just there as a, almost as a, a sort of a, uh, a bridging, rounding sort of aroma in there. So that's for taste. On the palate, the wine is probably mid-weight. I mean, the tannins are not enormous, but they're very present, um, and there is a sort of an earthiness to them. So, um, you know, there's, a, there's quite a restrained structure. Very, very fine tannins. Um, there's a sort of a, a slightly milky, chocolatey smoothness, running into more of a sort of a velvety. Um, texture as the tannins cut in as, as um, the fruit opens in, in, in the mouth there. Um, the red fruit is, is very harmoniously together. Um, there's no particular oak notes showing out there, although one assumes that they're, they're, they're behind. Maybe there's a slight seedriness towards the finish, but it's not really obvious at all. Um, so really what we're getting here is some sort of um, sort of mature plum prune sort of um, fruit notes and a sort of an earthy truffly um, note. Probably more earth than truffle at this stage, but I suspect the truffle will sort of start to develop out of it. Um, when uh, when I smelt and tasted this earlier, it was, it was much more um, closed and earthy and it sort of reminded me of some sort of um, sometimes uh, sometimes pomade can be quite um, red pomade can be um, quite sort of harsh and earthy. This is starting to open more, almost sort of as if it's toward a, a, a Gervais Chambertin sort of style. Um, maybe without quite the same bite. I mean, the, the, the tannins are there, but they're not um, particularly gripping or harsh. There's, there is grip, um, but 
this is a wine more of aromatics than of structure, to be honest. It's got really quite sort of delicate, quite high toned. I was talking about prune and that sort of note, and I was meaning that it's, it's quite a, um, a, a sort of a high tone developed sort of note to the fruit. Um, that's sort of nicely harmoniously together, and, and similar sort of things on the on the um, the palate. The alcohol, as I say, at fourteen percent, is giving a warmth to the wine. Um, it's there's just enough fruit to counter that at the moment. I think as the wine ages, the fruit will open and it will um, counter it better. Um, I, I was intrigued um, by the idea that the um, the winery suggests that this will cellar for 15 years or so. Um, I mean it has passable acidity but not it doesn't stand out to the extent that I've mentioned it at this stage yet, yet. it was something I was coming to. I think it's seen slightly more at the finish where the, there's a reasonable freshness and some um, attractive red fruit but um, at the moment this is this is a nicely balanced mellow harmonious wine that I would have normally have thought would probably age for four or five years quite happily. Um, I mean, it's got lovely Pinot character, very nice to drink now. I would be fascinated to see this in 10 years' time and see if it, if it has actually been able to open out and um, if, if the tannins are sufficient to carry it that far and if the acidity is good enough. Um, uh, 2020 was quite a difficult year, but they, they were talking about the fact that because... Um, it was quite wet and cold and windy during flowering of fruit set and even during ripening um, they didn't have the hot spells that they normally do. What it had ended up with was very concentrated um, small berries um, giving sort of um, really rich juice and, and some quite concentrated tannin, concentrated fruit tannins and possibly that will age in a way that I'm not expecting it to. So very interesting to try more. Certainly a, a very enjoyable Pinot now. Um, I'm, I will be interested to see if it manages to develop. So I hope you find that interesting. Um, do join us again. Thanks for listening. Bye now.